Today, we're going back to the basics. We're gonna figure out how to customize every single little thing that you can customize on your Twitch page, your Twitch channel, your twitch.tv slash your name. And I'll maybe give you some tips and tricks on how to optimize all that stuff in order to make it more yours. Let's get right into it. All right, so when you get to someone's page, we're gonna go from top to bottom. This is what you see. You're gonna be on the home tab. That's the home tab right there. So the first thing is what we call the banner. You can add some extra information. For example, right here, I have some socials, but in general, you just wanna display some colors because you have that little section in the middle here where Twitch will display your channel trailer right here, or it will display someone else that's live that is in your recommended list. Something else that we need to keep in mind is the fact that the website is responsive. So depending on what information you want to put on your banner, you can see that my socials are not visible until I almost have a full screen. So don't count on this to put a bunch of stuff in there. Okay. And by the way, you see the offline message here gives a little description of me and a couple of links. We will also customize that. So on the home tab, you can actually have different information display here. I have featured clips. Then I have recently streamed games. And finally, I have suggested streamers. If you want to immediately customize your shelf, you can go here to customize channel. If you don't want some of your recent games to show up, you can click on edit recent games. And at the bottom, of course, you have suggested channel, but you'll see they're, they're pretty much all at the same spot. So we're gonna see that a little bit later. Okay, let's get to the second tab, which is the about tab. In this one, usually you just have the description here. You have a couple of social links, five total, and then you have what we call your Twitch panels. Those can look wildly different, but uh, if you want to edit them, this is where you can click and basically add and modify them. You can click and basically drag them to switch position. And if you wanna add a new one, usually you go down there, you will see the plus and you can click to add either text or image panel. This is what we have or an extension panel. Extensions being a different type of panels that people can interact with. In my case, I currently have none. All right, one thing to know with those image panels is that you can put links and make them clickable. So if, if someone clicks here, they're gonna go to my wish list. Uh, they're gonna have my voice mod partner link. Uh, they can tip, etc., etc. Same thing here, of course, those are all clickable links. All right, next tab is schedule. This one is customizable, meaning that you can set up a schedule. You can basically prepare your streams in advance. But if you already streamed one time, it will actually appear here with the stream name and whatever game you were playing. So as someone who doesn't stream often, <laughs> I would probably have to go back a bit before I even find when my last stream was. Oh, there it is. Damn, 23 days ago. So you can see that I was streaming Grand Theft Auto 5. The cool thing is, as you will see, you can set it up to have a recurring schedule. So if you know you're gonna stream a specific thing, you can set that up. Then we have the video tab. Um, you can also customize the layout here. What I suggest you do is featured clips. Those are the, your best clips. So they really represent how fun your channel can be or interesting or, or high level or whatever. And then recent broadcast, because usually people click on this to go see your recent broadcast. So make sure they're easily available. And then after that, you can put highlights and uploads. So those are more curated. And then finally, you can put all videos. If you wanna customize the layout, you also have the button right here. If we click on chat, so that's the final tab, it's gonna bring you here. And this is what we call your offline image or your video player banner, which is a weird name. This is huge. This is basically 1080p and it allows you to display extra information. You know, if someone finds themselves here, why not show them, hey, I have a YouTube channel, I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram. But also if someone knows nothing about Twitch and they're here and they came here to watch your stream, I also highly suggest that you put the words currently offline. So when Mima tries to support you, she understands that, oh, you're not live currently. Okay, let's begin. Usually to go to your settings, you wanna go top right, click on your profile here, click on creator dashboard. All right, there's gonna be a bunch of information here, but do not get overwhelmed. We are looking for specific sections on the left here. What I like to do is start with settings and channel. If you're setting it up for the first time, this is pretty important. So first tab here is about, and this is where you will find your description. The one that shows up on that little offline message on your banner but also in your about section, right next to your links. This is where you edit that. So right there, if you wanna change your username, please don't. Uh, <laughs> so right there, you scroll a little bit and you will find the bio. So that's the description. And this is where you can change it. Quick tip, try not to be too self-deprecating in it. A large majority of people will not read it, but for those who do, it would be better if you weren't telling them how bad you are at everything 
and how you suck. Because a lack of self-confidence, even as a jokey, jokey way, might make people assume that the content is bad. You don't have to brag or be cocky, but you also don't have to shoot yourself in the leg here. All right, remember those social links? This is where you would add them. You have five in total. What I suggest you do is put them in order of importance, but most importantly, actually put five of them, single them out. For example, YouTube is what I do full time. So YouTube is going to be the most important to me here. I sell overlays. This is one of the many ways that I support myself. So that's going to be the second most important link. But if for some reason someone is just looking at my socials to find my socials, they're probably trying to find my Twitter or my Instagram. So I'll make that available. And then finally, I could put a link tree where they would need to actually open up a new page and then find my socials, right? I see a lot of people just put a link tree. Uh, that sucks. If I find you on Twitter and I want to see what your Instagram is like and your only link on Twitter is Twitch and I click on your Twitch. And now I have to click on the link tree so I can finally find your Instagram. That's annoying. Twitch gives you five links. Use them. All right. So that's mostly for all the text that is visible. Here we have a tab called brand. And this is where you can update your profile picture or you can just upload your profile picture. So some people will design their profile picture to have a border around it because when you're live, it puts a red border, but some people will put a green border or any bright color to make it pop up a little bit more. Do that if you want, but try to stay consistent with your colors. Speaking of colors, your accent color here is what Twitch will show on active hovers and things like that all around your channel. So you want that to be one specific color and you want to stick to it. For example, if I go back to my channel on the right side here, what you're seeing is actually the accent color. My banner cuts off around here and this is the accent color. So since I know my colors and I'm very precise with it, I made it so that the banner basically bleeds into this color. You see, when I hover over videos, you see that color show up. That's also the color behind featured clips. So this is what the accent color is. All right. So lower than that, this is where you can find that top banner that we saw. So same thing with the accent color. If you click on generated background and you don't have an image yet or something, it will basically use that accent color and then put a pattern of your name all around it. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna go back, refresh it. And you see, you see my name here. And it's just gonna load up that accent color. It's not very visible because my accent color is pretty bright, but yeah, that's what it does. Oh yeah. And since we're starting to get into, you know, custom images that you can upload and all that, there are many places that you can get some for free. I of course will advise you to get from my page on Gumroad, which is gumroad.com slash gal level. I have hundreds, hundreds of overlay packs that include banners, panels, overlays, alerts, everything you need to live stream. So consider it. Make sure you read the descriptions. If the description doesn't say it has a banner, uh, most likely it doesn't have a banner. OK, this one, for example, this is just a preview here, but I can already tell that's a banner. If I scroll down, we will see Twitch banner right there. Anyways, <laughs> All the way down, this is where we will find our offline image. So that's what will be displayed on that chat tab. And it tells you maximum 10 megabytes. It can be a GIF, a JPEG or a PNG. Now, don't get excited because you see GIF. Uh, GIF is actually just an image format. It doesn't mean it's going to be animated. In fact, I will confirm to you that it's not going to be animated. So yeah. And by the way, my overlay packs also include offline images. Well, actually, you can see it right there. <laughs> All right, let's go back up and switch. To be fair, at this point, you probably have like a pretty good looking Twitch channel. You just need to add some extras. So this is where you would set up the schedule. And basically, whatever stream you have planned, you can just add it here, put the title, choose the category, choose the specific time, and then select the frequency. So if it repeats basically every week, that specific stream will appear on the schedule tab. If it doesn't repeat, it's just one specific event. You just click on specific day and you pick that. Once you're done with that one stream, you can just click add another. So when you go to save, it will open up this again for you to add the second one. And of course, you might be wondering, hey, what if I'm on vacation or I'm taking a break from streaming? Uh, there's a vacation mode. You can just toggle this next tab featured content. So um, I believe you need to be an affiliate to be able to upload videos. So having a channel trailer is going to be an affiliate thing or a partner thing, just exclusive. So if you're not affiliate, don't be concerned with this. But uh, what you need to know is that it needs to be a video that is less than one minute. As you can see, mine is 0.59, so 59 seconds. I believe you can upload from this tab directly or you can just upload on your video producer tab and then come here and choose it. Right next, we have suggested channels. Basically, this is a list of channels that you would recommend that you can manage yourself. And then here, if you have that on, it will automatically feature that channel. So whoever is live in that list, it's actually going to play on top of your banner over here. It's going to say, hey, while gal level is offline, check out this person. 
I personally don't like it because it's a little confusing for people who are not familiar with Twitch. They'll go to your channel and then another channel will be live on your channel. So I usually turn it off, but you can manage that list right there. Suggested channel, you can put whoever you want in there. Up next, we have recently streamed categories and this is automatic. It will pick up whatever you streamed last and it will show it here. But one thing you can do is turn it off. For example, let's say you don't want just chatting to appear. You just click there and it will not appear anymore, but you cannot manually add any categories. Finally, the my streamer shelf is you know what's at the bottom of your channel all the way here and you can pick what to display in my case just suggested channels from my list if you're part of a stream team you can just show the stream members or you can put none and nothing will appear but it, it, it makes the channel look like so empty when there's nothing there and at the bottom here if you're part of a team it will show here i am part of herdheim so there it is okay so the last tab in here is stream events you won't find much in here but for now there's affiliate anniversary settings. So if you're an affiliate or if you're a partner, you will probably have something for a partner too, where you can celebrate that date every year. You can also switch the date, but what happens around that date is your community will see that it's currently your anniversary or not. Uh, they even have a chat option where they can wish you like a happy anniversary. All right, so those are pretty much all the basics. I'm gonna go back to edit panels because I wanna show you, uh, I wanna give you more information. So if you're adding a brand new panel and you click add text or image panel. This is what an empty one will look like. So you'll have panel title and we can say, this is the panel title. It's something that I don't really like to use. Whatever image you wanna add, you can add that. I'm gonna choose from one of my overlay packs. Let's say you wanna display your PC specs, you would pick this one. Here you wanna make sure you don't crop at all. So make sure it's the full image, click done. Here it is. And then here it says image links to so this is where you would put a link if you wanted that panel to be clickable. So if you have, I don't know, like a, a PC builder thing for your specs, you could put the link here. Or if you have um, Amazon affiliate storefront with all the parts from, from your computer, you would put the link here. And then there's this cool thing that Twitch added not too long ago, which is accessible image description. Here you want to write a description of the panel because if you have text in an image, um, someone using a screen reader cannot see it. Nice. And then finally, you have the text box where you can actually list your PC specs, right? You can type whatever you want in there, put the list. Here's what I have. And you can see here it says uh, supports markdown. Markdown is a uh, formatting. So if you want things to be bold, italics and all that stuff, Twitch actually provides you with a guide on how to get all of that stuff formatted. For example, we would want lists and it would be pretty easy to make it happen. All right, that's mostly it. But if you saw my panels and you wanna do something like that, clickable panels with no text, uh, yeah, just put no text, but also put no titles. Actually, I'm going to save this so you can see what it looks like. So you click submit, you wait a little bit. Nice. Then you have to go back and turn off edit panels. And if we scroll down, we can see it. <laughs> we can see it down there. So this is the panel title. We have the image and then we have the text. Now you can understand why I say don't use the title because well, the image usually has the title in it. And I also don't use text because, well, I like using square panels. It makes everything look a little more neat. Let's say if I want to remove this, I would just click on remove and that's it. Now let's talk about extensions. Extension panels, it's a whole thing, but when you add one, you can click on the extension manager. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Basically from this page, if you don't have any extensions yet, you will probably go to the discovery page where you can discover a bunch of extensions. And a lot of them do a lot of stuff. One that I obviously like to use is the voice mod one because people can give bits to basically change your voice while you're live streaming, which is pretty cool. So this is something that you want to take your time to see. What I would advise though, is don't fill your whole Twitch panels with like extensions because of colors, animations, it can get really, really confusing and overwhelming to the eye. So I would say try to keep like one or two max. What else? For those who have access to it, um, affiliates, partners, etc. On your creator dashboard, you can go to viewer rewards and this is where you will find emotes and channel points for emotes. It's pretty self-explanatory. Click on the boxes and you do what it says and you're good. You also have access to animated emotes and on the right here, it will show you your total emotes already uploaded. For channel points, which is right there, power-ups and channel points, you can decide to turn them off altogether right here. You can customize what the display looks like. You can see mine is a little arrow going up because they're quote unquote levels. 
And then here you have manage power ups and channel points. This is where you set up all the rewards and all that. A uh, quick tip, you can actually put a custom picture, as you can see, for each channel point, if you want to take the time to do that. But if you're not going to do that, one thing that you need to do is try to match colors. I don't have all my channel points here, but I try to make sure that you know, every green screen effect has a green background. I try to use the same icon for all my sound effects. I also put that little music icon to let people know. As I'm saying that, I realize I don't have the, the right one here. Now, the reason why this is important is because uh, when people go click here to trigger the channel points, it can get very overwhelming, very fast, as you can see. But here, at just a glance, you can tell what's going to be a green screen video on screen. <sighs> all right, what am I missing? I'm pretty sure I told you all the formats, but Twitch will tell you the formats that it's looking for. Usually it will tell you how big the file can be. For the panels, they're usually 320, but I put them 640 to just double the size and have better, better pixel density so it looks HD. Offline image, 1080p. Uh, profile picture. You can see how tiny it is. So anything from 300 by 300 up to 800 by 800. I usually keep it safe at 1000 by 1000. Now the banner can be a little tricky, but it's 1920 by 480. Also, I need to put my original banner back. In general, I would say try to keep the same colors. You can see my um, cyan and purple. It shows up pretty much everywhere. That's called, you know, visual branding. When the colors match that well, when people see that combination of colors, they will immediately think of you and it will make you more memorable. Uh, extra tip for the offline image is that you're going to have a gradient. You see at the bottom here, there's a black gradient. That's not me. That's the video player banner. So that's from Twitch. So you don't want to put any important information down there. Just like the right side here, we have the suggestion for the VOD. Uh, that's also not me, this whole black bar here. So you don't want to put any important information down here. Keep everything in the center to stay safe and you should be fine. I need to update this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I covered everything. If I missed anything that you would like to know more about, just let me know about it in the comment section below. And I will gladly make a new video or point you to an older video that I already made about it. Anyways, subscribe, share this with your streamer friends, and also follow me on Twitch if you want to. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.